All right, guys, what's up? We're gonna be uh, doing some 12900K overclocking stuff, but we're gonna be bringing out the air conditioner on this one because we know it runs hot, and I'm curious as to how much overclocking headroom we can get if we can keep the temperatures under control. So obviously we have to have our baselines and stuff. But first, a word from our sponsor. ViewSonic is proud to announce our all new Elite XG32OU gaming monitor. The XG32OU features a 4K 32 inch display with a one millisecond response time and 150 Hertz refresh rate and builds upon ViewSonic's revered Elite panel lineup. The ViewSonic Elite series monitors feature clean aesthetic design that blend well with any setup, whether it be professional or personal, due to their sleek design and tasteful lighting. To learn more about ViewSonic's gaming monitors or to see their full lineup of monitors, click the link in the description below. This video is made possible by viewers like you. Wait, from viewers. This video, you all make this happen. That's, okay, so we've showed a bunch in the past about how hot 12900K is, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm actually really surprised. The, um, the H510 Flow, which this is right here, this was that BLD build they sent us with this giant perforation and such, and a single 280 millimeter radiator is actually keeping this really cool. I do have all of the Intel, Intel limits removed from the motherboard because overclocking, that's important. Um, I don't have the fan curve adjusted at all. It's all being controlled by cam and all of the let core enhancements happen in the BIOS are happening, which is usually a, a recipe for disaster with 1200K in terms of temps. But if we if we watch right now, if I start Cinebench, which is the single hardest uh, free download you can do right now to test this, look, our package is at 71 and then our P cores which are zero through seven are in the seventies. And then our E cores are down here in the sixties and fifties. It's pretty insane how well it's doing. So 4.9 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.7 gigahertz on the E cores. Those are factory numbers right there. There is nothing special happening with that. But what's fascinating here is the fact that we just got a 27,494 without an overclock. And as you can see, that puts us right behind the 2990WX Threadripper, which has 32 cores and 64 threads versus 24. But the longer this goes, obviously the hotter it'll get. It'll probably cap out about 80 degrees on the package and then maybe in the upper 70s and upper 60s on the cores, just because of the fact that the water is eventually gonna absorb as much heat, run out of thermal capacity, and then it's gonna flatline at wherever, you know, the radiator is able to keep that load under control or watts dissipated in terms of heat, transferred to the liquid, transferred to the radiator, and then to the atmosphere. So all of those things are happening which is what controls your temperature. The one thing I didn't mention is the thermal paste between the IHS on the CPU or the internal heat spreader or integrated heat spreader and the cold plate on the water block. And so that's usually what our limiting factor is gonna be right here. I'm not gonna necessarily let this run right now until it maximizes. I already know that it'll go up about four or five C, which will bring it up near 80. See, so we've hit 78 for a second there. What I wanna do right now is I wanna see where and this is all factory voltage, by the way, um, which is set to auto by ASUS. And 1.279 or 275 is where it was showing on the vid or the actual core voltage itself. And it was like 1.342, I believe it was, on the actual V core, which is the package voltage. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into the BIOS and I'm gonna see now, I'm only gonna overclock the P cores. Overclocking the E cores made very little change when we were testing it, although we could go up to four gigahertz on the E cores. So let's see what happens with AI optimized. It looks like it's gonna try to go to 5.4 single core, 5.1 all core. All right, so let's just see what happens there with AI optimized. And I wanna see what happens with the temps. I have a feeling the temps are gonna go through the roof because one of the things that the optimized does is just says, you know what, let's account for all ASIC qualities and let's just shove voltage down its throat, which also means heat which also means most of the time it'll run that speed maybe for a few seconds and then it will start to throttle. But look, 5.5, that said 5.5 on core zero. That went farther than expected. 5.3, 5.3, 5.5, 5, 5, 5. holy crap. Okay, and then there's the 4,000 on the E cores. But what's our voltage right now? We're at 1.5 volts, between 1.425 and 1.5 on the P cores. I have no doubt as soon as I start this test, it is just going to hit hard. 76, 84, 82, 85, not bad. So 100 megahertz higher on the E core, 200 megahertz higher on the P core. Temperature's at 86. 
mid 80s to upper 80s on the P cores, high 60s, low 70s on the E cores. That is with just a simple 280 or 280 millimeter AIO. I wanna see if we can get 5200 megahertz P core. And if I can, we'll let this run until it maximizes its max temperature. So I'll let that go for like 15 minutes or so. It doesn't take long for an AIO to fully saturate. A custom loop with a big reservoir obviously would take longer because it's higher thermal capacity with that much water. Then we'll bust out the cardboard and the tape like we normally do. We'll plumb our air conditioner to the front intake of this and I'm going to seal up. Actually, no, I guess I don't need to seal up these fans because I do need to get the air out. So it should be fine. All right, so I've now gone in and manually locked at 5.2 gigahertz, all the P cores right here and at 3.8 gigahertz, all the E cores. Let's see if this will even run or if it'll crash. I don't think it'll crash necessarily. The voltage is really high. Oh, look at that. 90C, 90s on just about all the P cores. Voltage though is so high. Like I feel like I could go in right now and, and actually undervolt this a bit and be fine, but I wanna see now how much the air conditioner can make up for this. On side note, I'm doing an overclock this way by syncing all cores. Is remember how we showed that I had, a, had some cores at 5.4 and 5.5? Five, five? How that one core went to 5.5? Five, five? That so we've gimped that now by 300 megahertz by locking them. So if I really was gonna do this right, I'd go in and set a single core overclock at 5.5, then two core at 5.4, and then like three core maybe at 5.3, and then the rest at 5.2. That way, based on core count, um, it will be utilized based on, you know, if it's only one core loading up, it'll go to a higher clock speed. So this is actually gimping our single core performance because we've reduced that core clock down to 5.2. So I'm gonna let this run now for about 10 minutes. You see it's currently 10.45. I'll come back at uh, 10.55 and we will see what our temperature's maxed out at. I have no doubt it's gonna hit its max at 100 C and we'll probably see the core clock start to drop. So let's come back in 10 minutes. Okay, we're one minute shy of finishing the 10 minutes I showed you, but the test actually stopped a second ago because it's an automatic 10 minute timer. Um, but anyway, so look, we had package hit 100 C at one point and then core five hit 100 C at one point. Everything else actually stayed below that. Like, I mean, core one never went higher than 87, but we stayed at the 5.2 gigahertz the entire time and the 3.8 the entire time. Now, yes, if I were doing a video about making this more efficient, I would show you guys the benefit of undervolting because I don't believe we need this much voltage, but that's not what we're doing here. I'm trying to ramp up the cooling to meet the needs of this crazy amount of voltage at 1.45 volts. So you know what we need to do now? We need to bring out the AC. I honestly think of myself as a cardboard smith. Ow. It takes a special kind of person to utilize cardboard in such a creative way, which is why it's surprising that I've never actually created a cardboard box case yet. But I've seen some cardboard box cases you guys have come up with and Frankly, I'm scared because they're too damn good. So you have to tape up the sides. It's important that we stop as much air leakage as we can from getting around said computer. Wait, I think I need to do this. Push that over, push that over, push that over. Oh, that, that was my knife. It fell next to my foot, but we are fine. If you're one of those function over form kind of people, then this is this is a mod for you. This is right up your alley. Yes, you look good. I'm. Will you give me a second to get over there? Jesus, are we married? What is this crap? Stop it! I can see there's cracks because I can see it on this side. Do you mind if I tape up this side first? Did you hear yelling? Is that why you came in here? <laughs> Phil came in here and was giving a look. <laughs> How to control 12900K temps. <laughs> I've gotten too good at AC mods though, honestly, or cardboard mods. Like it doesn't look janky enough anymore. I mean, look at this. It's just nice looking. Watch, I'll make it look even nicer with one piece of tape. You ready? Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. I have fun doing this. I feel like I get to be more creative with these types of videos than anything else because they're really unnecessary. And it's the unnecessary stuff that I enjoy doing. And I'd like to believe there's a sub, sub audience of ours that enjoys these types of videos more than anything else that we've done. Probably because the jankiness of the stuff I'm building when I do this matches the jankiness of me. 
And you know what? I'm fine with that. Oh, and also too, I don't know if you guys noticed, the uh, CPU temp readout on cam was reading something completely different than what hardware monitor was. Hardware monitor was hotter, therefore I would take that one as being the most important one to keep an eye on because the hotter temps obviously are more important. Okay. This thing has been running for a while, so it's making some noises. So this beautiful piece of artwork right here is now brought our CPU's idle down to 10, 9, 7. Look at the cores. Core zero is at two or three C. Everything's in single digit. If you want any idea of how cold it is in the chassis, look at the graphics card temp, 10 C. I know, sure, I've got the fans up at 60 right now, but 10 C. Let's, uh, let's see what happens here. As soon as those fans ramp up, it should pull more air through the chassis. So the initial temp shoots up to 73, 76. That's already so much lower than it was already. Look at these temps. 20C lower already, almost 25C lower. Yeah, you know, I look at it this way. People have their gaming rooms or wherever their, their gaming setups are, and you know you start gaming for a while, it's gonna get hot in that room. And people talk about putting mini split units in there to cool it down or wall unit, or window units or whatever. I say you put a window unit or something designed to blow air into your PC. Because if this is what's heating up your room, keeping this cooler and the amount of cold air coming out of here will still cool your room off while you're getting the benefits of cooling your PC. So look at this. And what did our score do? 28654. So, I mean, it's fairly unaffected. But what I wanna see now, now that we've got this amazing amount of cooling going, I want to see if I can drop the voltage or maybe even jump up to 5.3. And the reason for that is, we've showed you a million times with our overclocking stuff, that temperature immediately affects Stability. We, we found with graphics cards too that were on the edge. If we could bring the temp down somehow where it was crashing under normal ambient air conditions by then cooling it like this and get, getting it chilled in some way without changing anything, voltage is nothing, increased stability. Because the hotter it is, the less stable it is. This is why I wanted to do this today because I wanted to see how much 12900K's overclocking headroom is directly related to the amount of volts it's taking on top of the amount of heat it's creating. So there's 5.3 all core and we'll just jump right back into the desktop and see. So the downside about leaving the voltage at auto, which means I'm gonna to have to go in here now and do manual on this, is that um, it's gonna up the voltage with the increase of core clock. So you see we're at 5.3, but look at the voltage now. See, 1.54, it added 100 millivolts to this. I don't think that's necessary. See, it, it upped that voltage massively. So obviously our idle, as you can see, is hotter because the voltage is so much higher and it's running full clock speed right now. Start multi-core. Oh my God. <laughs> it's doing 5.3 all core. It's at 88 on the package. Almost 90 degrees. Believe this, I've, I've not gotten 5.3 to run before. Do 90C on the package right now with the AC blowing on it. That's 100% because of the fact that we have poor thermal trans, uh, transfer efficiency between the cold plate and the IHS. We need better transfer there. That was a 29,370. Okay, considering the fact that we've already hit 93, <clears throat> if I try and go 5.4 all core, I wanna hit 30,000 on this, I really do. If I go 5.3, no, we're at 5.3 right now, right? If I go 5.4 all core, it's gonna pump the voltage higher um, to where it's gonna thermal throttle. It's either gonna crash immediately or thermal throttle. So I'm gonna try it on auto first, 5.4 all core on the P core. And then I think I'm gonna pull down the memory clock a little bit because it's at 5200 right now, XMP. Um, I think I'm gonna take some stress off that memory controller. So I'm gonna drop it down to like, 4,800 from 52. So let's drop that to 48. Let's pop that up to 54. It's probably gonna go for an insane amount of voltage right now. The cool thing about this too is because the room is so big <clears throat> and the AC is not getting any of that recirculated cold air and the vents down there, it's just gonna keep the compressor on because it doesn't think it's cooling the room down. Oh, it's stuck white green light on D6. Wait, the green light went out. Is it posting? We just don't have video at the moment. Oh, it's on desk. Okay, 
So it did that funky thing where it doesn't show the desktop initially, I think, that, or the BIOS splash screen. I think that might be because of the fact that, yes. That might be because of the fact that I have uh, changed the memory speed, timing or the memory clock speed, and so that causes that initially on this motherboard. But we should be at 5.4 all core. Yes, 5.4 all core. All right, what's the voltage now? 1.6. <laughs> I feel like we just did a video about this. <laughs> There's no possible way this is gonna not overheat right now. There's zero likelihood of that happening, even with the AC now just blowing away. And what's the, what's the power gonna be? So the, it's idling at 60 watts, and as soon as I hit start, it's gonna crash, I have no doubt. Oh my God, 360 watts! <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it crashed. It was going though. Oh my goodness, it was going. Okay, I'm gonna drop that voltage. Cause I think, that's a hard lock right there. I honestly, I can't touch the button. Cause I, like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't think about taping over the button. I can see the button. I just. Smart. You forgot. I already pointed it out. You need to push the power button to turn the computer on. That's how you turn the computer on. You know what? I told I told Nick I thought of this last time. Remember? Yeah. I got this. Does anyone have a picture of the top of the case? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That's U.S. I did it! Ha! <laughs> Suck it! There, sealed! <laughs> See, I'm not stupid. <laughs> so now that I have manually, or fixed my power button issue, I can go back. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to 5.3 all core, because I know that worked. If 5.4 didn't work at 1.6, I don't think reducing voltage is gonna matter. So I just wanna do one last test here. Uh, I wanna do 5.3, and then I wanna reduce the voltage. I wanna pull the, I wanna do a, a voltage, um, not really an undervolt, but I don't want it to go as far as it's pushing it. So I just need to put everything back to where it was, performance core ratio, sync all cores. Actually, no, we're gonna do this by core usage. So one core ratio limit, 55, two core, 54, and then everything else, 53. So. There we go, efficiency core ratio also going to do a sync all cores. I'm gonna put that at 15, no, not 59, 39. <laughs> That's what I meant to do. Okay, so voltages now, I'm gonna do 1.5. No, 1.45, I'm curious. I'm still impressed that we were able to do 5.3 at that 1.55 volts or whatever it was. 5.3 <laughs> at 1.55 volts and it did not immediately just melt down. <clears throat> I'm glad that I'm doing this after we shot that other video about how hard it is to kill a CPU because I'm gonna tell you right now, if I had seen 1.6, I would immediately shut it down before that video until I realized just how robust things are. And I still can't believe that 9900K is working just fine. So 5.3 all core at 1.45 volts wouldn't post. I had to up it to 1.5, which was probably a bit of a jump. Oh, look at that. I said 1.5, but it's at 1.45. At least that's what's reporting software wise. Oh, that's right. So I did the 5.5 single core. 5.4 dual core, 5.3 all core. So now you can see the importance of not just hitting sync all cores, which we're used to, because look at this. If we look right now, different tasks are happening. You can see 5.4, 5.5 right there. It's moving around. So there's 5.5 again. So we're actually getting that single core benefit. Gosh, I would love to hit 30,000 on this CPU. I just don't know. Look at that. 70s, 75. 77, that's so much better. Remember 5.3 last time we were in the 90s? And I, that's because I'm not having it do 1.55, it's at 1.45. So that 100 millivolts, that, yeah, made a huge difference in the temps, look at this. That's amazing. Ah, oh, 29.366. I'm gonna try 5.4 on all core overclock again at this voltage and see what happens. If it doesn't, if it's a no-go, I'll revert. I'll try going four gigs on the E-cores. That might get us up to 30,000. 
I just want this to pass. If it passes, this will give me my 30,000. Let's go. Dang it. Yeah, like I said, I, if it wasn't doing 5.4 at 1.6 volts, there's no reason I should have expected it to 1.45 volts. So, I need to now pull back to 5.3 all core, and I'm gonna bump my efficiency cores up to four gigs, and that'll be my last test. This is my, this is my Hail Mary. We're back to 5.3 all core on the P cores, and we're at four gigs on the E cores. I'm counting on those 200 megahertz on the E cores to lift the score about 400 points, and I'm not sure that's gonna be enough to do it. Come on. Go BB, go BB, go. We got plenty of temperature. Plenty of temperature headroom. Four gigs, five, three. Let's go. 30,000. Come on. Look at those temps. Look at that. That's amazing. 60s on the E cores. High 70s, low 80s on the E cores. Dude, core one is 67. We need all the cooling to be like on core one. What was that? Oh, 29777. Oh, I need that 100 megahertz. You know, I just one more test like four videos before. Like, I was like, let's just do one more test. And it turns into four more videos of LN2 overclocking. You guys remember those days? Because oh, yeah. we're over here getting LN2 headaches. <laughs> <laughs> that might explain some things. <laughs> <laughs> Your face. <are. laughs> My hands are officially freezing right now with the amount of cold air coming out of this like bottom of this case right here. Okay, 5.3 Alcor, P core, five or 4.1 gigahertz on all the E cores right there. Temps are great. Voltages are untouched. I got my fingers crossed that this is enough. Come on, go baby, go baby, go. Yes. Temperature's looking good. ADC on the package. It's funny how it came up a few degrees just by overclocking those E cores a little more. They're just like a bunch of little like angry cores causing heat right now. It's like you've got your heavy gunner in Team Fortress 2, and then you've got your like little spies just running around all fast. The E cores are the spies. Yay! Wait a minute. I wanted to beat this Red Ripper. We perfectly matched it. What the frick? <laughs> Can you give me one point? Now, I'm not going to overclock anything. I'm just going to run it again to see if we have any sort of a like margin of error change here. 300 watts on that CPU though, 300 watts. Oh, that's the wrong way, stupid. Let's go again. Hit me again, tube sock. It's going the wrong way. It's okay, we did match the exact temperature and I beat 30,000, which is what I wanted. It only took 15 or 12,000 BTUs of cooling to do it, <laughs> okay? Thanks, Intel. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.